Going down to check on my fencing project. Today is Monday, July 20, 2020. So I don't know yet who's absent or what are they doing. But I'm expecting them, Thai, expecting them to do continue the digging on the side, take out the forms. The forms already taken out, supposed to be last Saturday on the a continuation of those columns in between so I'm expecting them it's now 10 o'clock so they have dug a little bit further although I'm quite busy answering comments this morning and emails and also making breakfast and all that let's check I'm gonna have to check them so I know what have they've done because if not when the cat's away, the mouse will play. They will also just more talking than just working. I know they're hard workers, but they do have their certain funny moments as well, like anyone else. So let's see what they have here. I've seen that old Lito is now... What? I don't know what he's doing. Um, leveling out the pot for all the mounds that they have created while digging up. So they're all present here. Mingon ni mo anitay. Okay, mingon tas id kuan ba nga pa ipa hawan ko no. But I, they, can, they are digging here and they have reached the boundary marker here where the cactus used to be. So that will be the end line where they're going to have to make a form from here. But Janelle suggested that we have to finish the front, which is we're going to have to put um, bigger rebar columns on the front. And which I will have to check later on. So this is about how many holes? Seven columns right to the end here and so on this side they have taken out the forms except oh so this one is not even poured so they just they oh they just leave that one because they've forgotten this one it's hollow they haven't put muck on it so there's one two it's already done but I've seen that the barrels have moved have been moved so I'll check on the back As a thing. So since they have moved that and we have to pour this one as well because they forgot about it so they have to we'll pour that and then this one continuation here because they have moved the barrel <clears throat> since we cemented the back they move their washing machine so that's why I'm planning to continue the two more panels when we dig here two more panels that will be higher columns so that one another one here that will be extended column and another one extended column
because where are they gonna pour the drainage for this so this is what we are so far this morning then I'll check what's happening here on the front so you can see old Lito is spreading out the dirt so the multicab can go through easily not like going sideways because of the mounds that was created due to the digging so you can see here that uh, yeah, he's spreading it about and you know the column marker that used to be here on the top that's the marker we will reuse this column and extend this one here we'll pour the matting on this and extend the column because that's the one I use on these three bars are 20 mm that I used to put on my retaining wall on the castle so they want to reuse this one we'll pour another matting on this one and it chip it up so it can continue on to the connection on this one here so we'll put more 16 mm we got some 16 mm and also the across one so that's what they suggested that they're gonna do today is pour the columns on the front so it will look the same not like there is something left so when we pile the blocks on this side we will be able to clear out more the blocks will be out of the way then all the dirt will be more paved and plotten out then start to tamper down so this is what we are today and as you can see we are continuing digging like expected and we will be pouring these two columns on the side as because that's what we plan and we are using that column we're just gonna um, pour a matting on that one and then chip it up so it can continue attached to the ex horizontals and the beam for the we will wrap the beam around it or chip I think they will chip up the beam so the beam footing will also connect to that so that's what how they plan it so it's looking good so far you can see that the width of the road is now clearly seen And hopefully, this week, we will be on the bungalow now, that we will continue down. That will be the end on this side, where they are digging. And they have dug seven columns more from this end that we have ended. This last column, this one, two, three, one two three four I just see six because the Loy can't count but I think he's counting this one the last end column so there that's what we are so far at the start of the week today is Monday so like last Monday we started here from the fourth 
uh, panel here towards here on this side then here across that's we start from the fifth panel going up towards the end so that was a good job last week and hopefully this will all be sealed in for this week and we will continue down to the side of the budget bungalow this week as well so they are now doing the trench they have dug, dug all the columns the six columns 60 mm deepness and so our oh, 60 cm deepness sorry and so they're now just doing the trench and then they will be making the footing beam and so they will be pouring that this afternoon if they make the putting beam they have some um rings already ready so all the rebars is up there where our workplace is and since the trench is not so deep like the column holes so it won't take them long to make the trench now so this is what we are so far on this side we miss one column to be poured because Junelle um, was so busy cementing the back of the col the wall instead because of the of my instruction that you need to make the back of the wall cleaner so we will pour that one when we pour the footing beams on this side of whatever beam that he can reach that he will form up then I think he was re he reckoned that we can have two more panels here for this week at the end of this week so I'm hoping that will be the case because that will be a good thing that to be finished on that one and then we continue on this side and down there to the we will continue this one first here on this side of this boundary here right down to the edge of the Turner's property and I'm looking at here at the clearing up of the lot and the farmer that I have hired because JT wants to clear out all his plot and he's also including everything and so the farmer is still harvesting his corn like since Saturday so he wants to finish all the harvest first before he start doing the work here the one that I'm tasked to clear out all of this because they're they're used to it like that because they're that's what their job is clearing out so since they will be waiting for that farmer will be waiting for the next harvest like planting the, the seedlings first and then just waiting and no job anymore so that's why i'm telling him after his harvest he can do some work for me by clearing out the land on this one here he has to clear everything so all the plots will be defined and it will be clearer to see the topography of the land is either we will fill or dig down but I reckon we will fill it up because you know there's a coming plattening out across my plattening out of a hill across my house my castle from the entrance where the loy live and we can just have the free filling poured over here but after we have um continue on the file there right to the boundary at the edge of the turners entrance i will be repropping this side of the road repropp is means like it's not like what you mean anthony for acre um we call that refrap over here as well and we had a stone wall to protect all the soils from running over it will be starting where the um from the wall and then we start here going up about five feet tall and and there and then we can we will just 
fill it up with filling. But the purpose of that one is just to protect this soil from running down, eroded. Oh, sorry. The purpose of the riprap, I mean stone wall, is to protect the eroding of this side. And that one is only a small slope, it's just a small riprap, I think. But I'll start with here first. Because this is quite a higher side and going there. And this is where I'm going to put the water tank. That will supply all the waters here. It will be among the trees on top of the riprap so it will be it will not be an eyesore it will cover it will be covered and all the electrics of course will not be hanging on the not aerial it will be on buried on pipes or conduits because if you see my house going inside my house is underneath going through a pipe because that's the thing now people use don't like the hanging on the air of the cables from the electric wires so from my connection going into the house it will be around here i will put the pipe on top of inside the beam so that's why we're making a beam so that will be the electric connection going through the beam from the electric supply So I'm here picking up a pizza from SNR because they got a very nice New York style pizza here. So when you come here in the Philippines, this is one of the pizza places that you need to try. I'm sure a lot of foreigners here and already here have tasted what their pizza tastes like. This is just one of their branch. The main SNR actually is in Mandawi City where you can also shop but they have now branches here in Taft, Eastgate and then one in SM and one in Ayala Center, Cebu. And they're one of the restaurant that allows pickup. So you can order all the stuff that they have now they actually open now in their branches in sm and ayala center so but they still don't allow dine-in so you can see all the tables and chairs are still packed in they don't display it you only have to wait for your pickup I'm here in the crossing where the 23 Minori Park is there and Lander Store. I'm going to the right side to go to the Shakey's branch around here. And because my daughter wants to have some Shakey's as um, their mojos. And so I'll pick that up and go back to where my usual route to pick up some Indian and that's it for the day so it's green now I gotta go so this is the route towards supposed to be this is Mapolo area and a lot of establishments are still closed you can see anywhere that are open aside from the food places I pick up the mojos from Shakey's now I'm going back to my way where my usual route then pick up the Indian and then the other groceries that I have to pick up I just pick it up on the way um, the Gaisano Bakayan they have a few stuff there and, and it's um, nearer to where my usual route it's already in Talamban so it's this white one is so awkward 
So most of the establishment are still closed. There's nothing much difference the MECQ than the than ECQ. So it's still it's called the modified enhanced community quarantine, but it's nothing much difference. We still can cross Mandawi City and also not a lot of stuff is open just nothing but I've seen I've noticed that the traffic are more alive now got more vehicles on the road in fact around this one look there's loads of vehicles on the road so I thought the coding is still imposed like the enhanced community or perhaps people are just so bored in their houses now is this is since March 15 and Cebu is the one that's getting hit so much that we are the one that's still on lockdown like the enhanced ECQ the enhanced community quarantine lock hard lockdown we are the only ones remaining and now the modified and we're the only ones remaining because hopefully by the G GCQ we will be able to cross the borders on other cities here in Cebu, Cebu as of the moment I'm still just confined around Cebu city so you can see this is I'm gonna pass by IT Park and now I'm missing doing my pricing videos there's a Hummer car there it's too big for the road in my opinion just look at how narrow is the roads in the city so look restaurants even though they're high-end restaurants they are close usually high-end there's only a few people that's going in there so um, distancing will still be observed but it seems like nobody is opening so much only the ones with takeout and that one's a dine-in so they don't open now I'm on Vanilla Road I'm gonna pass by Country Mall soon but you can see that um, a lot more traffic now our schools are accepting enrollment but there is no date yet final date for the school opening mm -hmm. and so we wait and see a lot of children are happy about it of course no school and although some private schools are doing online lessons for their pupils and students so but the public school is what I'm talking about they are already enrolled I've heard more like chil Junelle's children and most of the community children there in the village they are all enrolled but they're just waiting for the final say of the president that the schools will be open but we are not op he said it's not opening it until a vaccine is found is found and then everyone can have it so it's, he's not risking everyone's life so here we are on my familiar route so you're there you can see University of Cebu Vanilla then the country more on the left side here now in Talamban area have you noticed that you have I've always passed by this road on going home so the progress here it is a building a big building built there just for Jollibee so there will be a big Jollibee here soon and they're continue working despite the quarantine so and I know a lot of you saying that I drive so slow you cannot drive so fast here in the Philippines actually in the streets of the city it's only 30 kilometers per hour is the limit because it is so narrow roads and there is a lot of traffic and if you had an accident and you go faster than 30 that will be another point on your reliability that oh why are you going so fast based on the on the smack um, evidence so it's only 30 on city streets and I'm driving 
in coordinance to what is allowed as the street provides. So here in the city, it's only 30 kilometers per hour. You cannot drive so fast unless you're in the highway, which will be 60. And with the potholes around, I don't want to be driving so fast because I'm also talking while I'm driving. And so it is, I do what is safer for me. I know you're used to driving fast in America, but you can't do that here. You drive so fast, you get smacked. The traffic here is not the way you perceive it to be. There will be somebody there just block you. There will be somebody there just come out of the woodwork, whatever it is, just crossing over. And pedestrians don't, don't even follow the lines on the road. They just cross anywhere. Unless there's an enforcer there, an officer, that will impose for them to follow the pedestrian lane. So, driving fast, it's not really a thing in the Philippines. Look at how narrow is the road. Look at all the blockage that you have in there. And people that have lived here already know that. So, you gotta have to live with my slow driving. But for me, it's not really that slow. I'm also talking and thinking well i'm because all my information is based on my knowledge that i've learned and so it's impromptu none of them is scripted because i already know that i have met that all the time so i'm gonna have to buy some load here for my other internet because my daughter is using everything i can't use the other internet and it's so slow so this is my favorite place to load here in this shop on the side because they always make sure that I got the load. So this is the Gemini station. I'll just have to park here. They even have their ATM services here. Oh, now that I have bought load for my internet from my friend shop and I'm gonna go forward now to pick up some groceries in Gaisano Bakayan this is now getting nearer to the place where I have to turn going to the hills so I always load there because I know she had a lot of load wallet because the internet I have so far right now is Wi-Fi and I have a smart and globe luckily on that village park paradise we are facing the tower there so there's no problem with internet unlike where the you know where the budget bungalow got no got no signal there you're struggling to get even a phone signal so I have to go down where the village park paradise is to get a signal so you're lucky gonna, the ones gonna be living there will have no problem oh the motorbike area is open i'm gonna have to pop down here and do some pricing on their motorbikes but i have food on the back of my car so i can't do that right now i'll just do it when i'm not bringing food that are essential to be kept warm so I'll go here, I'm gonna get some essential groceries, eggs, milk, bread, and I'm going home. The Lo is up here in the workplace um, where we store the materials because he's sacking sand. We have eight cabs of sand that they picked up last Saturday, but he's just getting ready for the anything that they're gonna pour here. Because like Junel's doing the rebars down there and He's just getting ready for the poor. Up down there in that cage, um, Scammy and her kids is put down, put there at night now because the kids just keep on going out to the road. So one time, they are so scared because one of them missing. At least they found it before anyone will think of stealing the kids, Scammy's kids. So... He better off lock them there 
when we cannot watch them. So I'm going down now to check on what's the progress of my road. And here you can see that it's now four o'clock in the afternoon because I went down to pick up some food. But you know that I told you that old B want, always wanted to have his koi carp pond, and I know he's gonna get it because I have now reserved for you know those blue barrels it, it sells here direct from the companies that have used those chemicals is in there you can get it at 1000 pesos around here because like i said i could get it by cost but if you get it by in talisa where they're selling it it'll be like one five one six depends on the sizes but the big ones i could get it for 1000 i ordered four for his koi carpan what I'm trying to say is, when I was younger, I always liked to have birds. I have birds in my squatter community that I put in cages. I My favorite are the budgigars. So if Old B will have his koi carp pond, I also think that I will have a two meter, two meter and a half, and by two meter and a half bird cage where I can walk in. So that will be an interesting additional content I could do in my channel. And not just that, I like birds. When I was younger, I do like birds. Love birds. And like I said, budgigars. I want to breed them. I don't know anything about breeding birds. I just like watching them. But I will try my best to do that. To be able to multiply them. So here, I'm now nearing my fence project, but you can see that they are doing the rebars on the front. It's because Junelle likes it that it will be finished how it looks like here on the front. We're using 16mm rebars on the front here because it's going to be carrying the gate. So they are making a column here out of 16mm rebars that we have extra in our house because you know the other column is made of 16 mm the one i mean is this one so we can just continue on even if i have to buy a couple of 16 mm just to continue on on this one if we run out there on the extras that we have back in the castle so we will continue on we pour the putting on that one and the horizontal we will chip it in inside it so it will hold together we will pull fill that up with um muck and con you know the footing beam will be wrapped around it and then fill it up with muck right to the hole and continue on so both on the front is having a 16 mm columns ready for gates that we're gonna be putting in in the future so if you're into biking here um those are the people from the bottom areas from the hill it's quite hard to bike here because it's all going uphill so you can see that they're trying their faces is like exerting effort just to push the pedals of the bike but it's easier when they get down because they can just skid on and they need their brakes so this is what Janelle is up to today is making the columns for the front
So going back here on my fence project, it's now five o'clock. The lads have already left. It's only the loy that's left here. They have made this column out of 16 mm. So that will be ready to be poured tomorrow. And then tomorrow they will be extending the how on the that ending of the beam, putting beam, and then it will be going over. To the back of the this old column that we're gonna reuse and then we pour the whole thing with the footing beam and right here on the end there is a rebar that they have also formed with regards to the column there's two new column that they have extended so you can see here that there that's also ready to be poured tomorrow and one so there's another column there right on where do we end and this one and this one so just one length of the six meter rebar tied up there and then continued up to here So that's what we're gonna do tomorrow is to pour the footings of this one and on the front.